up? What's going on? What's up? It's me, Erica. We down here. And we are talking about the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. So let's get started. Go ahead and like, subscribe, and comment. Let the diva know you stopped by. So let's go. All right, we here. Super cold today. I cannot stand future, but he he got the right frequency, his voice. Score two Scorpios on the song. That's so funny, huh? Anyways, I forgot him and Drake are both Scorpios. Just two raggedy ass niggas. Is that an auto tune on his voice? We talking about um Salt Lake City. Okay, let's talk about Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. I wanted to thank y'all for all of your comments and all of your engagement in the last two videos about the culture and kitchen and um and uh what cultures um Cardi B's baby kitchen and cocktails. So thank y'all. <laughs> Thank y'all for being so engaged in that. It really, um, I don't know what it was about that particular viral moment that made people more emotional than I actually was gauged. I was not expecting the response to that be so serious. But I thank y'all for being so engaged and going through the comments and stuff. I also wanted to thank you guys all for like your emails that you guys send, your cash apps, your super chats on the um, premieres, the support and the engagement really. And then you guys just coming down here, spending time with me, taking time out of your day, allowing me into your homes, to your cars and into your energy spaces. So I just want to make sure that I say thank you to you guys on some real shit. All right? All right. Hey, I'm a, I'm a, I don't have much notes for a Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. Actually, uh, I don't know. It wasn't that much. It was like 45 minutes, but I felt like it wasn't that much. I don't know. Maybe they just didn't have much to talk about. So they end up where they left off. And Jen um, is in the middle of stealing the scene. Like, what did we say last week? That every scene, drink every time Jen Shaw tries to steal a scene. Or effectively just takes all, brings all the attention onto her in this, this weird way. So she's in there freaking out. She's trying to talk to Meredith. Her nose is all red right here. I'm like, is she crying? Is that, is that what happened when she gets mad? I know when I get mad, my nose turns red if especially if i'm someplace and i'm trying to hold in the fury <laughs> Bitch. if you are ever around me and if you want to know is erica mad just look at my nose because that shit turn <laughs> it turns red honey it turns red and i get silent so just know the the fury is about to arrive honey so jen is out there freaking out acting a goddamn fool girl and then, and then, don't you hate when someone looks absolutely beautiful and is acting a damn fool? <laughs> like, girl, you out here in this dress trying to be cute and you out here acting so ridiculous. She said she had been drinking though, so that led, that probably contributed to her. But, um, they, they were, you know, she calls Meredith over. First she goes and sits down and everybody's looking like, girl, what do you want? <laughs> Because they know she's about to probably suck some energy out of the space. And that's trash. Nobody wants to be around people like that. Like, every time you come around, girl, I don't know if you're about to flip out. You're going to try to steal the scene or whatever. Um, girl, no, don't do that, Jen. That's Jen Shaw. You are so engaged with the R-H-O-S-L-C hashtag on Twitter. I hope that you are going through watching videos of people. Only advice that I would give you is it is unnecessary to try and steal every scene. It just makes you unlikable, right? It makes you un I don't want to I, I I just it's exhausting and I want to be entertained. I don't want to be exhausted. You know what I'm saying? Baby, wait. When Heather was trying to call Coach Shaw, they were like cuz she was like, "Let me call Sharif." So she calls Sharif, what the fuck is going on? She looking, she's acting a fool. And they finally get her outside. Baby, Heather was not, she was, make sure you watch my food. <laughs> well, I go put this 
this crazy ass bitch in the car with her husband. So she's outside trying to get Coach Shaw to look for her. She said, come look for a flapper with cankles. Bitch, I fell out. <laughs> She's funny. They all actually are kind of funny in their own way. Meredith, not so much. She needs to loosen up a little bit, which I say. She's all about that. When they were inside before Coach Shaw comes and picks Jen's crazy ass up. When they were inside, girl, wait. Why did Jen say out loud she fucks her grandfather? Girl, you are doing the most. I was like, oh my God. Everybody, and then the way that they cut it made it look like everybody was looking around like, what? <laughs> That was a mess and of course Mary heard her everybody heard her everybody said that it's that was ridiculous for her to say why would you say that and what does this have anything to do with what does it's very childish and it's very elementary and you getting mad at Meredith to the point where you're Meredith was like girl what are you why are we talking about Mary again I thought this was about me canceling the slumber party right and she was like i'm gonna get a chance to tell her I'm, i don't know how i'm gonna tell her she gonna freak out or what the hell but i need to tell her that you know how my son and daughter felt about the situation that was in the other scene meredith feels like what's her name owes her an apology and she also owes mary an apology jen owes everybody an apology i think she owes the group an apology because they were all out trying to have a good time and you came in with your awkward entrance trying to make a scene you make a scene you leave hollering and screaming your husband has to come pick you up you need to apologize to everybody for your behavior that's how i feel what y'all think y'all think she should apologize to everybody because that was just too much and do y'all have do y'all know a girl who goes out and just does the most and it's just like girl what and she sh should apologize to everybody because everybody stopped what they were doing to basically engage her and to entertain her. You need to apologize to everybody for your behavior, Jen Shaw. Meredith is at a gallery trying to get some artwork for her house. She said it doesn't feel like her yet. So Lisa, um, Lisa Barlow, I want to call her Lisa Bloom. Lisa Barlow shows up. And they're looking around. It was so funny because she was like, can I touch this? Oh, can I touch? Can I touch? I was like, at least she's asking if she could touch a girl's like, girl, you can't. This is art. You cannot touch everything with your greasy ass perfumed hands. No, you can't touch everything, ma'am. Meredith tells Lisa that her and Seth are separated but dating. Weird as hell, right? Ain't nothing weirder than what's going on in Bronwyn's house. Y'all, what? Did you hear? Shout out to Bronwyn. I, every time, it seemed like every time I talk about Salt Lake City, I'm giving a shout out to Bronwyn. Bronwyn shared with everybody that she is a lesbian and she is not attracted to men, even though she has seven children with her husband. And she is staying married to her husband and she has a girlfriend and her girlfriend comes around the house and stuff. And her and her, and her husband don't sleep in the same room. I was like, what? Shout out to Bronwyn. Anyway, but that was it for that. Mary and Lisa. I don't know why Lisa was at Mary's house. That just seemed forced. Like, just go over to Mary's house and talk. But they were talking about the party. And Mary shares with Lisa that she feels like it's a competition. I think it's the same thing. I'm going to say it. And I'm just going to be honest and transparent about it. Usually, I'm just going to be honest and say it. This is, in my experience, and what I've observed over my life is that when a non-black woman is with a black man and there is another black woman in the room the non-black woman who has a, a black male partner tends to be insecure about what's going on in the environment she, t she tends to hold some insecurities I feel like Jen feels like she needs to compete with the only black woman in the group because you don't act like that with none of the other women that's just had that's just have has been my my experience in my time here on this planet living in this matrix is that what i just said the non-black woman tends to be confrontational with the black woman she tends to be passive aggressive she just tends to have some kind of and it's a and it's based in insecurity because you're non-black with a black man amongst another black woman 
and and that's just how I feel about it and I feel that that's what's going on with Jen and Mary I love that next week was like Mary Mary was like what you gonna do you gonna hit me what you gonna do <laughs> come on Mary girl she was like cuz I'm black cuz I'm black and I, I'm black and I was raised in uh, Salt Lake City that's what she got you you caught that at the little at the little dinner party anyways so I feel that that's what it is too I feel like it's a competition with Jen Shaw um, that Jen Shaw has with and nothing's worse than being in a a group of women and there's women competing with you and you have no idea that they're competing with you and and it's it it doesn't create a good you know relationship between you and that person because they're competing with you and you don't and you have no idea that they're doing that i think she's coming up with other things to be mad at mary but i think it's rooted in a, a competition she doesn't know whether she wants to invite her to the get together that she's going to have this little luncheon that is supposed to be a Met Gala themed Met Gala event. I don't know. <laughs> I was confused too. I was like, okay, but the Met is a place where they have the gala and every year it is a different theme and we all we know it we know it right he doesn't know whether she wants to invite her there because I don't want to sit around people I don't enjoy period and you don't have to say nothing else after that nothing oh her son comes down that was cute that was a cute part her son comes down and baby she was like he bought his girlfriend a chinchilla a dog and a Prada purse and she was like I just want to let you know that purse is gonna last longer than your relationship <laughs> she's right <laughs> she's right she's so right she is so right it's so funny i like mary i like mary's little she's quirky like like it's literally the word for her is like quirky and the way she talks and then how she expresses herself with her eyes and she'd be in the, in the interviews going girl like girl like <laughs> You know somebody who expresses themselves with their eyes and they start blinking their eyes and eyes get big when they talk to you. I know y'all know somebody like that. That's Mary to me. I think it's great. So she says she doesn't want to know, but she feels like she needs to invite her because if she doesn't, then she's participating in whatever bullshit she got going on. And I felt like that was like, I, I can agree. I was like, okay, yeah, you got a point, Mary, because I wouldn't have invited her. I'm not inviting you. I'm not like when you said, I don't want to invite anybody that I don't enjoy you don't have to say nothing else after that she's not enjoyable the last two events she's acted like a damn fool I don't want to be around her I get it but when you say if I don't invite her I feel like I'm participating in her bullshit I was like okay I get it invite invite her for the sake of this event that you're having just invite her and see how it goes but jen does uh, owe mary an apology for saying that she is a father motherfucker a father fu a grandfather fucker or whatever i don't know what she said because they bleeped it i don't know what she said so jen goes over he heather's house and heather is making a green bean casserole. <laughs> a green bean casserole boy white people love a good old green bean casserole with the fried onions in the canister <laughs> out the aisle they love a green bean casserole. That's hilarious. Now what Ashley had on her table at Thanksgiving. <clears throat> so she says, how do, how do my lips look? At one point she goes, how do my lips look? And she's like, Vis visibly or physically, you're a perfection. But emotionally, girl, you're a mess. You are a mess. And she is. She's a mess. She's like, no, I get it. My dad died a year ago. I don't have a lot. I don't spend a lot of time with my husband because he's very very busy and I get to just talk to him oh you know what I thought about when Jen said that she gets her pep talks from her husband she should start an app for him develop a mobile app where he gives like a daily recorded pep talk maybe he doesn't have time for that I'm, I'm giving honey I'm throwing out ideas for y'all to make some other money off of this you know these little things that you're saying do what candy does honey candy figures out a way anything that's going on in in her scenes on real housewives of atlanta she creates a play a dungeon a sum she always figures out a way to make something about her storyline into a profitable revenue that's a smart smart woman if anybody has used a platform effectively out of the every single person here is bethany and candy that's it 
Bethany and Candy have really used their platform, their Housewives platform, and have really, Bethany really went bananas. But Candy does the same thing too. And I think, you know, that's just a little idea to throw out there. Like Candace with her handkerchief, she should definitely have handkerchiefs because you were always crying. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know, when Nene had, you know, and Nene was always wearing those off the shoulder, one shoulder out shirts. When she had her stuff at HSN, she had one, a one shoulder shirt. You just got to figure out a way, child. Anyway, he says she's lonely and she tells, then she ends up telling her this business. She ends up telling her business, which I don't like playing tit for tat in friendships. I don't, I think that's trash as hell. You are supposed to keep that to yourself or maybe she didn't tell her to keep it to herself, but she was like telling Heather that, you know, the girl about the girl's marriage. I'm not cool with that. Party planner with uh, Mary and her party planner. So she's so passive aggressive. She was like, that's just a little major flaw. You spelled, did she say she, they spelled everybody's name wrong or spelled them upside down? What did she say? She said something to them people. It was funny when Jen was talking about the pep talks of her husband. She was like, um, it, the first pep talk he gave me was 28 years ago. Said, um, what did he say? Look for your exits. Do you know where your exits are? She's like, no, I'm not in the CIA, Sharif. <laughs> Do you know where your exits are? What are you talking about? She was like, girl, I don't know where my exits are. I'm not in the CIA. That was cute. I, I laughed out loud at that one. The two things that made me laugh out loud was the product purse and the relationship. The, I don't know, I'm not in the CIA. And when Heather said, look for a flapper with cankles, bitch. <laughs> that was funny to me. Okay, anyways, let me get back. Heather and Whitney are in the car talking on the way there. So, Heather tells Whitney now, see now, Jim done told Heather. Heather then told Whitney about Meredith's marriage and her bitch. She was like, girl, I didn't know that. Every time I ask Meredith something about her life, it's oh so perfect. To which I say, you know, she gives you that every single time. Um, she needs to loosen up. She really does. She's so pent up. She seems like she's just so like, but she handled Jen well in that little 1920s. She was like, I'm disengaging. I'm not engaging in this. We need to talk about this later. We're at a party. I'm not trying to do this. And that's, that was it. But now they got something about Meredith's marriage. So they get there. The decor was nice. They're talking, they got these little Louis Vuitton ear, earbuds. She gives them little gifts. She has all the gifts. It looked really, really nice. And she put a lot of thought into it, to it. You know, she had things personalized and engraved and all that stuff. And it was it looked really, really nice. And so she tells everybody when they walk in to write something special about themselves down that they want to share with everybody. Mary shares she was like i'm gonna go first so first they pray and they trying to say amen and mary is still praying she's getting emotional i'm not sure look like jen was in not during the prayer but it looked like at times jen was emotional too i don't know so it's it's hard because they i think they inject reactions in places where they don't go it from the same scene they okay take this reaction and put it here right or take this reaction and put it here right after this scene is over put this reaction in so it could look like that was a reaction to that you know what i'm saying you never know what when people were actually really reacting or really how they were reacting um unless you get a wide shot whitney says she has to let go of the opinions of others people's opinions of her she wants to let go of that mary says she has trust trust issues lisa says she's basically hard on herself but she's not gonna stop you know being uh, um being a go-getter i guess and whitney was like girl i don't know if that's confidence or arrogance whatever it is I, I i wish i had a little bit of it whatever jen explains that she's the oldest of six kids um she loves hard and she loves her friends and it you know she's passionate about her friendships and mary just injects and says you know your words can also be weapons we always talk about that right how words hurt just as much as you know fist or anything like that so I just wanted to apologize and she apologizes to Meredith and Meredith's like girl because I didn't know what was going on with you I, I, I couldn't figure it out but she doesn't apologize to Mary so we'll see what's going to happen because it's to be continued maybe she does actually apologize to the whole group which I hope she does because they all deserve it anyways that's it y'all take care of each other protect your energy and get down in the comments peace